Hello, my name is Michael Taft, and this is my video on how to jhana. So we're going to learn today how to enter the first jhana. So what's a jhana? A jhana is a word that means to meditate, but in the context of Theravada Buddhism, old school Buddhism, it means a special state of absorption, a deep absorbed concentration state that is particularly powerful. And we use jhanas in order to deepen our concentration, deepen our unification of mind, purifying the mind so that we can, for example, do really good vipassana or really good non-dual practice and other deep transformative awakening practices. So jhana is by itself really fun, but also it makes a great setup. It's a wonderful practice to deepen your absorption to allow you to do even more meditation uh, work. So jhanas are great uh, and today I'll just briefly go into how to enter the first jhana. So let's begin. So the very first thing to understand about jhanas is everyone says they're about concentration but that word is a little confusing in English because when we say concentration in English, we kind of mean grabbing the mind and wrestling the flashlight of attention and pointing on it at something and then keeping it there no matter what. So there's this sense of struggle and this sense of tightness and control. And that's absolutely not what we want in jhana. There's somewhere in the Pali Canon that the Buddha says, you know, someone asks him about how to do jhanas or what jhanas are uh, for or about, and he says jhanas are about happiness, right? And this is the essence of understanding how to get into a jhana. We're not trying to wrestle with the mind, we're not trying to control attention tightly or rigidly or with constriction. We're trying to be loose, relaxed, open, and enjoy it. And so the word instead of concentration that I prefer is absorption or unification. And the idea of absorption or unification is that the mind kind of gathers naturally around something it finds very attractive. Okay, so understanding that what we're doing is gathering the mind around something pleasant, this is how we conceptualize the jhana and it makes it much much easier to enter the jhana. So in order to do this, we start out doing some kind of shamatha on an object. Shamatha on an object means essentially concentration meditation on anything. Very often you'll hear people say that for jhana you must focus at the breath, at the nose, or maybe breathing in the whole body. And those are fine objects. But honestly, in order to do a jhana, you can concentrate on anything you want as long as it helps you get nice and focused and absorbed and unified, right? So uh, you can use a mantra. You can use a visualization. I like visualization to enter jhana because it can get the mind very, very absorbed and unified rapidly. Uh, some people use fire casino for the same thing or other casinos. In fact, casinos are for jhana, right? That's why they where that practice was invented. And a really interesting way to do the focus part of jhana, the setup we might call it, is with metta, uh, loving kindness meditation or compassion meditation. Why? Well, again, one of the things is we want to be focused on something pleasant. And the Brahma Vihara states are very pleasant. Also, though, something that's important for the first jhana is that what is called the hindrances or kind of the negative bummer qualities in your mind get reduced. Um, in other words, you're not actively worried, you're not actively struggling and trying to control, you're not actively angry or something while you're doing the jhana practice. That's called, you know, abeyance or reduction of the hindrances. And so what you want to do is get your mind and your body in a happy place. And metta is really good for that. So no matter what your focus object is, whether it's some uh, breath object or a mantra or a visualization or some other body object, 
or metta or whatever, for any of those, it can be really good to just take a moment to like soften your heart or feel uh, some joy or some gratitude when you begin because it really, really helps engender that mood. So to begin going into the jhana, you're going to spend as long as it takes just meditating on your focus object in a relaxed, heart open, uh, relatively uh, peaceful and calm way. And you're going to do that as long as it takes for something to start happening. And the specific thing that needs to start happening is called PT. The PT needs to start arising. So what is PT? It's spelled P-I-T-I. -I. It's a word from the Pali language that the Buddhist suttas are written in. What is PT? Well, it's funny when you read the translations of PT, it's pretty clear that most of the people who are translating this word in the past anyway, did not have experience with jhana. Uh, because they, they call it all kinds of things, uh, you know, bliss and uh, rapture and stuff. But these are not good descriptions. The best description of PT is it's a body buzz, a very pleasant body buzz. And it can feel exactly like kundalini type feelings, buzzy, tingly, energy feelings in the body, or it can... Um, well, actually, it can go anywhere from kind of a light, warm, fuzzy feeling when it's maybe kind of very, very, very soft and gentle. Uh, sometimes it's like fireworks going off in your body when it's really unstable. It, there'll be like a burst of PT, burst of PT, burst of PT. You know, zzz, zzz, you feel this tingliness in your body. And it can go all the way up to this kind of volcano of orgasmic rapture, like you're just getting uh, incredibly intense body uh, pleasure that is actually so intense it's a little uncomfortable, and we'll talk about what to do with that. But all of those are PT. And what you want to do is concentrate on your focus object, concentrate on your focus object in this happy, relaxed, non struggly non-tight uh, way. It's got to be open, heart-melted, peaceful, happy, right? You're doing this in a very joyous and relaxed way without a lot of expectation. And as you do that, uh, you will find that you, uh, you start feeling more and more positive sensations in your body. Your body will just start feeling good. In fact, uh, Many people uh, use as their focus object deep belly breathing with these long, slow breaths because that will tend to make PT happen anyway, right? That's like a kundalini type breath and you'll feel uh, very pleasant energy in your body arising when you do that. And so no matter what your focus object is, eventually the PT will start. But you're not ready to go into the jhana yet because a lot of times the PT is momentary or very weak. So you want it to be both stable, so it's continuously present, and also strong enough that you can focus on it if you want to. So in other words, you're waiting till the PT becomes stable and pretty reasonably strong. So you're on your focus object, you notice the PT's happening, but you just keep going with your focus object, just keep going with your focus object, whatever it is, until the PT is strong and stable. And then you do the next thing. And the next thing is the big thing. So let's talk about that. If there's one thing you remember from this entire video, it's this. When the PT gets strong and stable enough, you switch your attention from your focus object, whatever it is, you take your mind off that, you stop focusing on that, and you move it to the PT. In other words, you move it to focusing on these pleasant sensations in your body. Now, for some reason, something about human physiology, for most people, the PT starts arising in their hands. You'll feel this sense that your hands are like, uh, warm and energized and buzzy and tingly and they'll feel maybe big like big oven mittens or something and they feel really good 
And so you switch, you take your attention off the focus object and put it on the PT in your hands. Or it might be in your throat or your face, particularly your mouth. The mouth can get filled with this very delicious PT. And if it's there, then you focus there. So wherever the PT starts happening, you take it off focus object A, put it on focus object B, which is the PT, and then leave it there. Okay, so you switch focus objects, and then you don't do anything more. You simply rest the mind on the PT and leave it there in a very relaxed, open, pleasant manner. If you try to force it or try to push the PT harder or try to kind of wrangle your way into the jhana, it will fail. So again, it's about being happy, open, relaxed. The one thing you can do besides just being relaxed that helps a little bit is again, you can have a mood of kindness towards the PT. So let's say it's happening in your hands. You just, you kind of uh, feel gratitude and joy for the PT or you just love it, right? And you kind of, uh, in your in imagination, beam this sense of love and gratitude towards the PT. And there's something about that that will help. And again, you do this in a very relaxed, easy manner. So the PT is happening somewhere in your body and maybe you beam a little open-heartedness towards it, a little love, a little, a little kindness, and you're with that and then you just stay there. And that may go on for a while. But what will happen, and this is the big moment, right, is that at a certain point, the PT on its own will just whoop, ramp up. And it will ramp up a lot. And it will take your mind and just whoop, into the jhana. Your mind will just gather or unify, like that's what the absorption is, that's the unification. Your mind will unify around the PT. And congratulations at that point you are in jhana one. Uh, the mind has gathered on the PT and you will definitely know it when it happens. It's a very particular sense of being in an altered state. And it's a really pleasant altered state. So again, you did it at that point. And then once the PT arrives, a number of things could happen. One, maybe it comes on, you know you're in the jhana, and then you get excited and get tight and try to control it and play with it and whoop, you just pop right out. You were still in the jhana, but you were there for maybe, you know, 30 seconds or something. But good, you still achieved it and now try again. And eventually you'll kind of get more relaxed when you're in the jhana and then it will stay a lot longer. So that's number one thing that can happen. Number two is that you don't get all excited and flipped out and instead the, the PT arises, you're in the jhana, and then it's relatively stable and you stay there and you uh, kind of soak in the PT, you absorb in it even more, you spread it throughout your body. This is one of the interesting things, once the PT is strong enough, you can kind of move it to fill the rest of your whole body and then just absorb, absorb, absorb to the point when you're either done with the meditation or you um, want to move on either to a further jhana or to work on your vipassana, which would be a very good thing to do, or to work on your non-dual practice or whatever. So you go into the, into the jhana and it's stable and you work with it from there. That's number two. The third thing that can happen, and this is not that rare, it happens pretty often, is that the PT arises, there's like this mushroom event of the PT just suddenly whoop, and it is really strong. It's so strong that it's uncomfortable. It makes you feel like you can't breathe. It makes you feel like um, you're going to explode. So it just came on stronger than you were ready for. And if that's the case, sometimes it pops you back out because you're like, whoa, that's too much. And then if, that, if it's too much and it pops you out, you just work on it again, you know, a little more relaxed, a little more openness, and see if it can come on more smoothly next time or maybe less intensely. Um, but another thing's possible, which is, let's say it comes on really strong, it's uncomfortable, it's too much, but you stay with it for maybe a minute or two, and then 
you can just move on to the second jhana, right? One way uh, past this intense PT is sort of through it. And so if you're going to do that, then you go into the second jhana. And the second jhana, instead of focused on this body uh, buzz, this buzzy, tingly energy, it's focused on joy, on happiness, on just straight up joy. And usually that's centered around your mouth. Not always, it can be in the heart, it can be other places, but for many people, it's just this big, big, big grin of joy. And it turns out, if you switch from the PT onto the joy, which is instead of a body buzz, it's an emotional flavor, right? Um, and you focus on that, it's much more refined. It's much, it's like going from a really coarse burlap or something to silk. It's like going from crunchy peanut butter to smooth, even though I like crunchy better. In this case, the smooth is really nice, right? It's because it's, it's smoother. And so you go into the second jhana, into the happiness, and, and maybe you can stabilize there. Congratulations, you've already gone into the second jhana. So that's great. So this is how we do it. That's it for going into jhana one and maybe even jhana two. The cool thing about the jhanas is they're great for a number of things. One is you can just get involved in developing the jhanas for a while. So stabilizing jhana one and two, deepening them, uh, working on three and four, or even going to the formless jhanas after that. You know, this is its own long and, you know, uh, effortful, it's a, it's, a, it's a long path development of the refinement of the mind. And this is worth doing on its own. It's a very powerful practice. It's a life-changing practice. If you learn to have, you know, wonderful body tingliness, wonderful joy, uh, in jhana three, peacefulness, in jhana four, uh, equanimity, if you learn to do these at this very deep, very stable level, it's going to change your day very significantly because you can just learn to bring on non-jhanic levels, but still powerful levels of joy on demand, tranquility and equanimity on demand. You've really trained your mind into these very deep, very positive states. And part of doing that is the mind has become more subtle, more refined. It's a more, it's a sharper, more, uh, and more stable, and it has more finesse. It's a real benefit just to work on the jhanas by themselves. Uh, many texts say that there's a potential that you could get like uh, addicted to the jhanas because they're so nice, but I never met anyone who was like addicted to jhanas. Um, maybe this is something that happened in the past, but most people, you know, get really good at them uh, if they work at it and then move on to the other things you can do with jhana. But even by themselves, jhanas are a great meditation object and many people love working with them. What can you do when you get better at them? Well, for example, you can work then on your vipassana. Uh, in the, the scriptures of the Pali Canon, the Buddha makes it clear that jhana is the prerequisite for insight. When you have a jhana level uh, concentration, a jhana level absorption, your mind is unified like that, then it is powerful enough to do vipassana well. You can get insight and move on into stream entry and so on. So um, it's really super powerful, very fun and fascinating to ramp up your concentration level to the jhanic level so that you can then do insight and that's very worth doing. Another thing, a non-traditional thing you can do with it is use the stability and sharpness of the jhana-focused mind to work on non-dual type practices. You know, awareness of awareness practice. When the mind is refined and stable enough, that becomes much, much easier. And of course, these later Buddhist traditions use either jhanas or things that uh, teach jhana-level concentration uh, to do non-dual type practices. So in other words, the jhanas are this great platform set up themselves either to you know, just work on 
in their own right to refine the mind or to use as a like a base camp for going to these higher peaks of meditation skill and uh, insight and awakening so if you get good at even jhana one that is very useful somewhere in the suttas the buddha says you know jhana four is sort of really reliable for producing uh, awakening but even jhana one is enough even jhana one is enough concentration to get awakening and so it's uh, really useful even at that early stage so i hope that you uh, consider working with jhanas uh, some of the things that will help you are books and uh, audio tapes and so on. The best ones that I've found, the very, very best one I think is the book Right to Concentration by Lee Brasington. And Lee uh, is a friend of mine. He's a great guy. You can listen to a Deconstructing Yourself podcast where he talks about jhana. And his book is just simple. It's straight to the point. It's no nonsense. And if you follow his steps, you will get to the first jhana. It might take you a while, you might have to go to a retreat, but if you work at this diligently, you can do it. Most people can do it. Um, another really powerful book with a lot of information is The Mind Illuminated by Chula Dasa. He really goes into the different uh, depths of jhana. So, you know, we talked about jhana one, two, three, four in a sequence, but there's also depth this way where you can be in a light one or a medium one or a really really deep jhana one and so on with the others so there's the second dimension of depth and chula dasa makes all that very clear and puts it in a nice chart in his book and also gives a lot of really useful instruction on how to go into the jhanas um, very worth reading then there's the english teacher rob berbea who recently did an entire jhana retreat and recorded it so that's at the Dharma Seed audio library. So you can get audio recordings for free of that entire very deep, very powerful jhana retreat where he gives unbelievably complete instructions, lots and lots and lots of hints and tips and tricks, and also guided meditations about jhana. It's so worth it. It's a great resource. And even better, there's a 457 page PDF like that thick transcription of that retreat uh, download it print it out write all over it make notes really dedicate yourself to uh, your jhana practice and get in that first jhana and get your mind uh, cleansed clarified refined and stabilized so that your practice can be awesome so that's my instruction video on how to jhana i really hope it helps you i hope you get into the jhanas. I hope you read the books. I hope you do the practices. And I hope that you achieve the jhanas so that you can use them to, you know, vastly improve your life, to clarify your mind, to deepen your absorption, to have a happier life, and also to use them as a platform for awakening. That's the real purpose. So I really hope that you do that. And if you like this video, uh, please subscribe to my channel. All the best.